everybody! Welcome to video 5 of the Basic Electrical Series. So, in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about different types of circuits, like series, uh, simple circuits, parallel circuits, series, parallel. We're going to get into some terms you're going to want to know uh, for the future, like total circuit amperage, uh, and what that means, and, on, and how we're going to calculate it. Um, and that's where we get into the basic math. And when I say basic, I really mean basic multiplication and basic division. I'm going to use some really easy numbers just to make everything sort of nice and round. Uh, but we're going to calculate how much amperage is going through the circuit based upon given readings for voltage and resistance. We're going to utilize that Ohm's law a little bit. So uh, that's what this video entails. First, let's get into the different types of circuits that we're going to be coming across. So this one that I have drawn here and I've had drawn in the past couple of videos is what we call a simple circuit. What does that mean? A simple circuit is a circuit that has one thing to do, one load. Um, I will get into the math behind these and each one as uh, we go along, but first I just sort of want to lay them all out. Now, past a simple circuit, what happens if I was going to add a load? Right now we've got a light bulb. This could be a motor, this could be a resistor, this could be a horn, doesn't matter. Uh, it just is a load doing something. What if I wanted to add another one? So what if I wanted to add another light bulb? Well, how I wire that is gonna depend on whether it's a series circuit or a parallel circuit. If I put the light bulb in line with the other load, so if I have a light bulb, and I want to add another light bulb. Ooh, let's try to make that connect there. In line, that's called series because these loads are in series, right? So this is what we call a series circuit. It, it's going to be anything more than one load. So if it's just one load, it's simple. But if I start adding more in line and series, then that's series. And it could be two or it could be two million. Um, it's it's just how they're wired in. Now let's say past series, what if I didn't want to do them in line? Because there's some drawbacks to that. I'll, I'll talk about each one uh, and how the rules are, are sort of played in those circuits. If I wire my headlights up like this, meaning I have one wire going up to my first light bulb, pretty much almost exactly like the circuit I had. But what if I added another wire, almost another branch off of our power wire, to power that second light bulb rather than putting them in line. That's called, and, and so we've got now two branches to go back to ground. Um, this is called a, a parallel circuit, and that's two branches or two million branches. It doesn't matter just e if each one has its own branch to ground after the load, then it's going to be considered a parallel circuit. There's a lot of uh, benefits to this type of circuit, which is why parallel circuits. Um, there's a lot of simple circuits, but most of the circuits in the vehicle are parallel circuits. Now, lastly is series parallel, because some of you might have been thinking, well, what if I had a light bulb before uh, my first branch, maybe, right? Like this. That's called a series parallel. So my first load is in line with both of these because the voltage and current has to go through the first load in order to get to the next. Before, with just a regular parallel circuit, each one had its own fresh 12 volts. Um, and so that would be a series parallel. The same thing would apply... Um, if I had, say, two loads in one, br one branch as a series. Some might call that a parallel series. Doesn't matter. Um, they don't play by the same rules. Uh, we do see a little bit of series parallel circuits or parallel series in the vehicle, but not near as much as uh, pretty much everything else. So um, I'm not going to cover the math of series parallel. A, because it's not near as common, but B, because it is also a little bit more complicated. So I'm going to leave that for a, uh, a, an electrical specific class because there's no need to get sort of deep into a circuit that you're not going to have really much to do with until you hit that class anyway. So I'll leave the, um, 
the math for a series parallel until a 54 class. Um, right now, just know that that's that type of circuit, a series parallel or a parallel series circuit. Now, a couple terms you're going to want to know because we're going to be doing a lot of measurements in here. So you're going to want to write these down. The first one is going to be TCA. And TCA stands for um, The way amperage works is as long as we have continuity, the amperage generally remains the same throughout the entire circuit for certain types of circuits. Now, sometimes amperage gets branched off like in a parallel circuit. But the, the amount of amperage that comes out of the battery is the same that comes back in the battery. In between, it might split up, but it's always going to come back before it comes back to the battery. So total circuit amperage is referring to that amperage, how much amperage is coming out of the battery. So that's TCA. TCR is total circuit uh, resistance, meaning... Um, the resistance of the entire circuit. Now that's calculated a little bit different depending on if it's a series circuit or a parallel circuit or a series parallel circuit. But this right here, the total circuit resistance determines how much amperage is going to be in that circuit. So the higher the resistance in that circuit, we are looking at a lower amperage in that circuit. The lower the resistance in that circuit, the higher the amperage is going to be in that circuit. And I'll show you how those numbers sort of get manipulated here in a minute. Um, one last thing I want to get into, and I kind of been talking about it, is uh, the term voltage drop. The term voltage drop is, uh, or what I will refer to as VD. Um, the voltage drop term is referring to how much voltage was used up between um, these two points. Um, in, oh, so if I'm asking you a voltage drop of a light bulb, then I want to know how much going in, how much is being used up between the front of the light bulb and coming out of the light bulb. Um, so I, I've kind of been talking about this one a lot. So now that we know what TCA is and now that we know what TCR is and voltage drop, Let's sort of play around with some of these numbers um, because, again, it's not near as hard as it may seem. Now, again, we're, we're all talking theoretical stuff here. I, I think it's really important to sort of have this nice, solid base and understanding before you start to build on it in, in your experience in wiring. It, it allows you to understand things um, on a much deeper level. So that's, that's why I, I cover it. I feel like it's important. Not everybody does. I feel like it does, uh, or that it is. So let's talk about the basic math involved. Let's look at a circuit again. So 12 volts coming out, right? We've got our fuse because it would be irresponsible not to use protection. We've got our switch here. And uh, we're just going to do a simple circuit for right now to make things nice and easy for us. Uh, lost my cap. Let's try to figure out TCA and TCR of the circuit. Well, first things first, TCR on a simple circuit is real easy because the resistance of that circuit is simply determined by whatever the res resistance of that load is at. So most of the time, uh, we're gonna have some sort of resistance rating for a load. Um, let's just say for the sake of things right now, we'll call it two ohms. This light bulb is two ohms worth of a load. Um, so Let's go back to our handy dandy Ohm's law pie chart because that's how we figure this out. Very, very easy, basic math. Uh, let's draw our Pokeball. Remember, voltage goes on top. Always remind yourself of this so you don't put things in silly places. 
Um, we've got our amperage on the left and we've got our resistance on the right. Remember, our center line here is a division line. Well, the vertical line here, well, either both center, I guess. The horizontal line is division. Well, the vertical line is going to be multiplication. So now that we've got our little table here, let's fill it out to see what we have. If we look at this circuit here, again, if we know any two, we can figure out our third. And we do know two. We've got two ohms of our light, or, or our light bulb is worth two ohms. Um, and, and when I do these charts, I like to put a question mark, whatever you're looking for, um, because it's going to keep you from putting a number there on accident. And, and you'll see later why this is important. If I know I'm looking for total circuit um, amperage, let's go back. Let me back up here. I got a little crazy. Let's look at TCR first because if I don't know TCR, I cannot know. I need to do I need to know two to figure out the third. If I only know one, we're stuck. I don't need to figure out TCR in here on this simple circuit because it's the resistance of our our one load. So TCR Sorry to clarify, I didn't do that before. Um, total circuit resistance in this whole circuit is going to be 2 ohms because we only have the one load, the one thing to do. So we've got 2 ohms as our total circuit resistance. Now that we know total circuit resistance, we actually know our source voltage. So there is a third here that you need to know, but I'll pretty much always give it to you. Um, because testing batteries are really easy usually. So uh, we'll call this last one source voltage, not voltage, voltage. And this number, I should have uh, planned that out a little bit better, in our case here is always gonna be 12 volts, but test your battery. The first thing you do before you test anything else in the vehicle electrically is you always test your battery first because nothing else can have more voltage than your battery. Your battery is supplying it to everything. So um, if you got a battery with six volts, don't be too surprised when you see six volts down the line uh, to try to operate some of that. So source voltage, we know it's 12 volts. So let's go ahead and plug that in. We know that the total circuit resistance for this whole circuit, because this one bulb is the only thing being used, is 2 ohms. So we can fill out 2 ohms in our pie chart. Now, looking at Ohm's Law pie chart, all we have to do, we know this horizontal line is division. We take 12 and divide it by 2. That tells us, and I'll write in a different color here, uh, again, I really like to put a question mark here so I don't accidentally put things in there. Normally, before I even start this process, uh, I got a little carried away. But we're looking for TCA, right? 12 divided by 2 ohms. Source voltage divided by 2 ohms says that I'm going to have 6 amps in this circuit. So... What that also tells me is that means I've got, as long as I've got continuity, I've got six amps flowing from beginning, six amps here, six amps here, six amps here, all the way back to the battery, because that's what continuity is about, right? So I've got current, whatever's coming out must come back in. Six amps, six amps, six amps everywhere. Oprah with six amps, right? Uh, let's look at voltage because uh, last video we talked about where voltage should drop. We've got to, and I'm doing this in blue because I've got it written down in blue here, but we got 12 volts coming out of the battery, 12 volts going into the fuse, coming out of the fuse, going into the switch, coming out of the switch, and 12 volts going into our light bulb. Now, again, what do we use up? What do our loads use up? They use up voltage. And we know we're not allowed to have any voltage come back to the battery, so this light bulb is going to light up, and it's going to use up all the voltage, and we're going to get zero volts coming out of that battery. So now we know how much amperage is flowing through that circuit, right? And if we were to calculate how much voltage is being used up, I mean, it's really easy. We got 12 going in and zero going out. We're easily using 12 volts. But if you wanted to look at the math behind it, it 
does actually play a role. Now, I hopefully, yeah, you guys can see that pie chart here. If we wanted to just map, we, I mean, I know it's obvious, 12 volts in, zero volts out, it uses up 12 volts. But you can prove this, because what if later on you end up with more than one load? Hmm? What are you gonna do then? Uh, so let's figure it out mathematically. First off, uh, let's stay back on track with, let's throw that, uh, that, that question mark in there I was talking about so we don't fill anything silly in here. What are we looking for here? We want to know how much voltage this thing is using up. So I'm going to put a question mark here instead of putting my source voltage because your brain's going to be like source voltage, source voltage. Not right now. The answer will end up being the same as source voltage. But um, again, we want to just make sure we know the math behind it. So when we do have more loads, we know how to figure it out. We do know since we figured it out that we have six amps and this light, this one light bulb is rated at two ohms. We multiply six because the vertical line is multiplication. Six by two, six amps through the whole circuit by two ohms. And that would give us 12 volts. Now, obviously, if those numbers were different because we had multiple loads in the circuit, then we might not be using up all 12 volts. Um, maybe I have to share that voltage. And so this one will use six volts while another light bulb will use a different amount. So that would be how you figure that one out. We're going to do a lot more of this. I just sort of wanted to throw it out there, give your brain a chance to start thinking about that. Um, but that is essentially what you're going to want to take from this uh, total circuit amperage, total circuit resistance, source voltage, voltage drop. And we're going to do this until our brains get numb, until you're freaking experts at it and you know this like the back of your, your hand. So um, next video, I'm gonna get straight into series circuits. We'll talk a little bit about the characteristics of uh, them. They're very much like simple circuits, except they've got a couple little things added to it. So in a simple circuit, amperage remains the same throughout the entire circuit. Uh, total circuit resistance is determined by the one load that's in there. Um, and we know that uh, just based off of what we learned before, if I was to increase the resistance of my light bulb, let's go back and say instead of 2 ohms, um, we can say, what if it was 6 ohms? Hmm? What, if it, uh, what if it was 6 ohms? So what does the math look like that? So we increase our 2 ohm light bulb to a 6 ohm light bulb. Go back to our Ohm's Law pie chart. What are we looking for? We want to know how much amperage is in the circuit. So we're going to go ahead and put a question mark there. We know I've got 12 volts. We know that the one light bulb in the circuit is 6 ohms now. We've increased it. We take uh, 12 and we divide it by 6. Or we take uh, 6 go into 12. And that is going to give us a total circuit amperage of 2 amps. Now we've got 2 amps flowing through this whole circuit. What did you guys notice? Exactly what we were talking about earlier, right? If I increase my resistance, my amperage drops. And if I was to go backward to the 2, I decrease my resistance, my amperage increased. It was 6 amps, right? So just start getting used to these characteristics. Um, because if I've got a circuit where I've got a problem, let's say I add resistance somewhere else, my amperage is going to go down. So if you've got dim headlights, weak horns, um, stuff like that, you could be looking at added resistance to a circuit. So knowing these, these, these uh, characteristics are really, really important. So uh, that's all for this video. Like I said, next video is going to be 100% series circuit. So I'll see you there.